everyone, Kelsey here for another Species Spotlight. I am right outside of the Botanical Garden um, on Stock Island beside the golf course right here. And today's species that we're going to be looking at is the Muscovy duck. So these two individuals are who I'm talking about. They can be easily identified by looking at their face and bill. As adults, they have red warty skin, also called a caruncle. The purpose of this is to keep their face clean when they're uh, searching in the mud for their food. Um, so otherwise, if they were to be covered in feathers, that mud would get stuck all down their head um, and it would be much harder to stay clean. They, these two, are a feral or domesticated species. Um, so in Florida, they're not native, yet we have lots of them here. The reason for that is that they were bred by humans and brought here as an ornamental species. Basically, that means that we think that they look cool, they look pretty, so we brought them here to put in our parks and near our lakes and things like that. Because they're feral and domesticated, uh, they mostly rely on human handouts. So you'll notice that these guys are hanging out pretty close to us here. Well, they're used to humans coming by and giving them scraps, bread, crackers, whatever. So they don't have that fear of humans that most wild animals should. Now there's also a wild population of Muscovy ducks. They look a little bit different. They are found from northern Mexico, south through Argentina, and more recently into south Texas. So the wild population is a little bit slimmer. As you can see, these guys are very large species of ducks. Wild population is a little bit smaller and more black. So these guys have a more varied plumage. You can see some green iridescence, some brown, and a lot of white species is mostly black with some white feathers on their wings. So we have some more individuals over here. As you can see, um, their plumage is even more varied than the ones that we were seeing um, on the other side. They are considered an invasive species because first of all they were brought here by humans. They're not naturally occurring in this area and they cause harm to our ecosystem. So they actually carry lots of diseases that can be spread to other native birds or native species. They can outcompete other species that are living in this area. Um, and they can cause harm to the vegetation and ecosystem that they have. Now, these guys are mostly fed by humans. The wild species, however, are omnivores. What that means is that they will eat plants or meat, a combination of both. Um, they'll search in the mud near bodies of water for grasses, mangrove propagules, um, mollusks, crustaceans, small fish, small reptiles, a wide range of things. They're usually found in heavily forested areas near a body of water. That body of water can be fresh or brackish water. Brackish meaning it's half fresh and half salty. So that could be a river, a swamp, a mangrove swamp. Um, a lake, any of those things. Most of the time they'll nest in hollowed out trees um, 10 to 65 feet off the ground, so it could be pretty high. Um, they'll also use nesting boxes, which are becoming more and more important because their population is now declining due to deforestation. Um, so people are taking out the trees, they don't have a site to nest. So now people are coming out, creating these boxes that the females will go lay her eggs into usually between 8 and 15 eggs um, and then incubate them for a full month before the hatchlings hatch. When they're little babies they look nothing like the adults. Um, they don't have any of the caruncles, the red warty flesh on their skin that grows as the, the duck matures. Another kind of interesting feature of these guys that you might notice if you come up to them is that they hiss instead of quack like most ducks do. They'll hiss and sometimes they'll even pant. They almost sound like a dog. Now for, um, what I want you to leave you with is that although these are feral, they're domesticated, um, it's never a good idea to feed uh, an animal living in the wild. Because like I said, they then depend on our handouts and they become comfortable with humans which usually results in harm to wild animals. So make sure that you're not feeding them. I hope that you learned a lot and I'll see you guys next week.